Unifor strike deadline has passed with Ford Motor Company. A judge tosses out sex workers' concerns about their safety. The E. coli outbreak that is going on in Calgary continues to grow. Canada expels a high-ranking Indian diplomat over allegations that India was involved in the murder of a Canadian in Surrey. And 24 people are dead in Peru after a bus accident. Good morning. It's Tuesday, September 19th. I'm Nora. Here are your headlines. First, we start with auto bargaining news. The contract between Ford Motor Company and the workers' union Unifor expired last night. After that, the workers are now in a legal strike position. There are more than 5,000 workers at Ford. Their brothers, sisters, and comrades in the United States plants are already on strike. The United Auto Workers are also in bargaining and have also not been able to reach an agreement with Ford, Stellantis, and GM, also known as the big three automakers. 13,000 members of the Auto Workers Union are on strike. For Canadian workers who work for Stellantis, Unifor agreed to extend their contract while it bargains with Ford. Traditionally, Unifor picks one company to bargain with first before bargaining with the other two. But the American Union decided to go after all three companies at once. The strike has hit plants in Michigan, Ohio, and Missouri. The auto companies make a lot of money, and the workers are demanding a bigger slice of the pie. For example, profits at Ford Motor Company last year reached more than $10 billion. Unsurprisingly, on both sides of the border, wages and pensions are the big issues that workers want to see movement on. But Unifor has said that they and Ford are still far too far apart. CBC News reports that this is the first time in decades that the two unions have been in a position to go on strike at the same time. What the CBC report doesn't mention is whether or not the U.S. strike will impact Canadian production. With so-called just-in-time manufacturing, cars cross the border dozens of times before they're built, and they arrive just in time on Canadian and American assembly lines. A strike in the United States will undoubtedly impact the work in Canada. CBC's story concludes by telling us GM has 58. 800 employees split between Oshawa and St. Catharines, and there are 8,200 workers at Stellantis, which is the owner of Chrysler. They work in Windsor and Brampton. Next to the decision of an Ontario Superior Court to toss out a charter challenge that wanted to test whether or not Canada's sex work laws are unconstitutional. The process was brought forward by the Canadian Alliance for Sex Work Reform. The article by CBC's Desmond Brown doesn't actually explain what the Alliance was arguing was unconstitutional. He writes that Stephen Harper's reforms made it illegal to pay for sexual services, profit from sexual services, and communicating to buy sexual services. But the loop in the article isn't exactly closed. We're left to imagine why these things might place a sex worker in harm's way. On Twitter, the HIV Legal Network was a little more clear, saying that they will fight to get rid of all laws that criminalize sex work as it places Black and Indigenous sex workers in particular at greatest harm and prevents them from making their working lives safer. The judge also questioned whether or not the Alliance understood the law itself, something that the Alliance rejected. In their press release, they wrote, quote, This patronizing conclusion ignores the extensive evidence submitted describing how sex workers and non-exploitative third parties, and particularly migrant and black sex workers, are being arrested for third party tasks, unquote. It is likely that the Alliance will appeal the ruling. Brown also quoted Robert Valley, the CEO of Parents Against Child Trafficking, that said that the ruling was, quote unquote, fantastic. Now, the Minister of Justice and the Attorney General of Canada, Arif Rani, didn't make a comment, though he responded to a request by email with this, quote, Minister of Rani is carefully reviewing the decision, unquote, Chantel Nothingberger wrote in an email for CBC News, which is uh, never heard Nothingberger as a last name before. <laughs> Next, the E. coli outbreak in Calgary continues to spread. There are now 348 confirmed cases of E. coli and 27 secondary cases. E. coli is highly transmissive, and so secondary cases are to be expected. Nine people are in hospital with hemolytic uremic syndrome, down from 12 on Saturday. There are more than six daycares that have been additionally shut down because of the outbreak. 
The CTV News piece by Melissa Gilligan doesn't say anything about the owners of any of these facilities or whether or not they are private for-profit or private not-for-profit, nor does the article mention whether or not there would be any criminal responsibility for any of the leadership of the kitchen where the outbreak originated. Next to national news, and probably the biggest news in Canada today. You'll remember from either just knowing about it or from listening to the Daily News podcast that Hardeep Singh Nijar was assassinated at the Guru Nanak Sikh Gurdwara in Surrey. Now, the federal government is saying that there is quote-unquote credible evidence that Nijar's killer was connected to India's government. Trudeau was just in India. He was there last week and then had an extended stay when his plane broke down. He met briefly with Narendra Modi during the G20 summit. Nijar was a prominent and popular and an advocate for an independent homeland for Sikhs in India. He had previously been accused of being part of a plan to murder a Hindu priest in Punjab. This detail led many to believe that India was behind Nijar's murder. Melanie Jolie has expelled a quote-unquote key Indian diplomat in retaliation. She did not name the individual, only stating that this person was the head of the Canadian operations for India's foreign intelligence agency. And an unrelated but related Related side note, Pierre Polyever in the House of Commons yesterday fully said the N-word when trying to say Hardeep Singh Nijar's name yesterday. And he really, really says it. Uh, you can check the video out for yourself if you're curious. It's his statement of support for Nijar's family and saying that he's concerned about the details of what's going on. I bet that the media establishment in Canada will chalk that up to, oh, I don't know, oops, slip of the tongue, could have happened to anyone, and move on. You know, I mean, the mostly white media establishment, I should say. So keep your tiny eye on that and your big eye, of course, on the real story here. And finally, to Peru, where a bus veered off a mountain road and crashed, killing 24 people. It had been going from Ayacucho up north to the Junin region. As many as 36 people survived the plunge of some 150 meters, reports Al Jazeera. This is the second deadly crash this year in Peru of this size. The country's roads often cross into the Andes, which makes them winding and sometimes perilous. In January, 24 people died when a bus went over a cliff, and there were several large-scale crashes that happened in 2021. There has been a spike in traffic-related injuries and deaths in Peru in recent years. And quickly, just before I sign off this morning, okay, so I'm actually recording this last night, and this is a bit awkward because Unifor News is breaking right now as I'm preparing this. And so from the first segment until now, it is very, very possible that the union goes on strike tonight as of midnight. Lana Payne, the president of Unifor, has said that if there is no deal, they will walk off the job. That's all we know. It is not quite midnight. I'm hopefully going to be in bed by then. So pay attention. If Unifor members are on strike when you are listening to this this morning, it will be a historic cross-border strike that will absolutely have impact, not just on the other bargaining within the big three, but really for workers all over Canada. This is an important industrial union that has a lot of weight over setting wages and other kinds of industrial standards. So, if they're out on strike, solidarity to you folks, uniform members. I'm a uniform member. I'm totally with you. And if they're not, well, strike was probably coming because it doesn't look like Ford is moving too quickly. And I will probably let you know on Wednesday morning. Those are your headlines for Tuesday, September 19th. I'm Nora. It is Tuesday. So Sandy Nora is coming out today, unless there's a problem, because by the time you're listening to this, I will be in flight somewhere in Canada. But Here's hoping that everything runs smoothly and the technology does not fail me. You are listening to this podcast at sandynor.com on the Real News Network podcast feed and wherever you get your podcasts. Don't forget Toronto, October 14th. There is a live show. Get your tickets at thepointofsale.com. They're going fast, so you don't want to miss out. We're going to have a really fun time. That was your headlines for the day. I hope you have a good one.